everyone, Julia here. Welcome to Creative Union Yoga and part two of Cat Pose Marjolasana. In this video, we're gonna focus on the four movements of the spine and how, how they feel in our bodies, the sensations that come up and to see how our spines feel afterwards. If they feel tingly, energized and alive and more mobile. So that's the goal. We're, we're going for spinal, uh, increasing spinal mobility, finding that suppleness and youthfulness of the spine. Okay. Okay, so coming on to your hands and knees, again, finding your setup, adjust as you need to. Again, I wanna make sure, I didn't really mention this in video one, and I should have, but making sure that uh, you're allowing the bones of the arms to support you rather than mm, squeezing and tightening and working those muscles. Uh, cats are pretty chill, right? So let's, uh, Capture that, the laid back chillness of a kitty cat. Okay, so in video one, we focused on flexion and extension. So we know hmm, flexion is a forward bending and extension is back bending. And both instances we're looking for um, the spine, or sorry, the skull and the tailbone moving away from each other. Again, I can use the pull of gravity to my advantage in the forward bend to let the weight of the skull fall so I can lengthen the neck. I use the weight of the pelvis, the base of the spine, the safe arm drop. to help lengthen out that lower back. So I think of the weight of the bones, the weight of these two ends falling or lengthening, that I don't have to work so hard, I don't have to push and push and push to stretch things. I can just oh, let them relax and soften. Again, I don't have to work so hard. Okay. Awesome, flexion and extension. And we also have that snaking that we did in video one. So you can snake your flexion and extension, moving smoothly between these two um, movements, actions. Great. And then well, let's start to introduce, I'm just gonna pull my hands up a little bit here. Let's start to introduce side bending, okay? So uh, side bending in cat, what it tends to look like is this. Yeah, I start to look at my pelvis. I start to lean to one side and I come completely off my legs and I should bring my whole spine to one side and strain, the, put so much weight into one side. I start to strain and I start to get tired. And that's also not a true version of side bending. Um, again, because my whole spine basically is shifting. So if I really want to experience that bend in the spine, what I'm going to think of is resting, settling, sinking all four paws. So mm, my right paw, my left paw, and then my right paw and left paw. So all fours from the top to the bottom. They're gonna continue to evenly settle, rest and sink into the ground. And on that out breath, I'm gonna again, think of lengthening that tailbone and skull away from each other as I start to bring my left side of my pelvis and left shoulder towards each other. I'm gonna keep both eyeballs looking to the ground. And as if I had eyeballs at the back of my skull, both those eyeballs are staring right up to the ceiling. So I'm not turning my head uh, to look at my beautiful behind. <laughs> yeah, um, this is, it's not wrong. 
it's different. It's just you're adding a twist. So it's not a true side bend because the neck is starting to twist. But if I keep both um, eyes gazing to the ground, I'm letting the head bend sideways, letting that left shoulder come to my left pelvis. There's the bend and on my right side, I am side stretching. So then I can do the other way. So right shoulder to right side of the pelvis, keeping all four limbs, all four paws, evenly distributed, evenly resting and planting. I'm not shifting. Good, so I can take this a few times. Almost like, I like to think, uh, if you think of a dog wagging its tail, right? Their pelvis goes to town, like bah, 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 right? That's basically what you're doing in your side bending. They don't go like this, yeah? They literally, their pelvis um, moves separately, yeah? It kind of does its own thing. So uh, see if you can uh, bring that into your own body. So I can, you know, wag my tail as if I got a tail going on back there and just notice what's happening. Ah, my left side is coming closer to my left shoulder. Left side of the pelvis closer to my left shoulder, right to right, yeah? So then I can start to increase it so I can bring that left shoulder to the left side of the pelvis as it comes. Yeah, there you have it. Now, the other thing I can do for side bending here, and it's, uh, again, it's a little bit different. So this is a nice true side bend in cat. Again, keeping both eyeballs at the back of my skull looking at the ceiling, and both my real eyeballs <laughs> looking right down at my mat, following, just following uh, the movement of the spine. So they're not locked anywhere. They're just kind of going along for the ride. The other thing I can do is I can walk my hands to one side. Yeah, so I can walk to one side. So try that a few times. Walking to one side and then the other. And then as I arrive to one side, a few things I can do here is I can play with extension or sorry, a uh, Yes, flexion and extension, so I can dome that spine up to the ceiling and then extend the spine. So now I'm starting to um, integrate several movements of the spine. I'm integrating or I'm starting to um, incorporate flexion and extension in the side bend. Mm, yeah. So you can walk to the other side on your own time. Try that a few times on one side and then move to the other side when it feels right. Again, find your own way of breathing. As long as you're breathing and not holding on to the breath. Really Include that exhalation in your movement. Yeah, exaggerate that out breath. Good. So walking to one side, whatever side that is, I can also incorporate that snaking-like movement. So flowing or snaking through flexion and extension. Awesome. And again, do that a few times on one side. Yeah, really working through that spine. And the more I breathe and incorporate the breath, the more I start to release the tension and soften the tissue around the spine. So again, the spine can move in a more um, agile way or, or supple way, mobile way. And then one more thing I'll add to this walking the hands to the side is for fun, I can take one hand. So if I'm uh, walking over to my left side, I'll take my right hand, just take it out in front of me ever so slightly 
And again, I can incorporate flexion and extension. Mm. I can add the snake and you just be mindful of how much is good for you. Ooh. Starting to build heat in the body. This is good. See? Subtle movement. You can sweat. It's true. Yeah? We don't, we, we tend to work so hard all the time. Sometimes that's great. Absolutely. I'm not saying don't. I'm just saying, give yourself a chance to move without working so hard and see how that feels. For me, I personally feel like bobble head. My, my body has created so much space it feels like it's floating. This could just be years of practice. And I say give it a try. Always give it a try and explore and experiment. Great. So make sure you do both sides a few times. And then we're going to come back to the center and the next, um, actually, here's a chance while I chat away, <laughs> jabber away, uh, just take a moment to sit on your heels and if you need to roll your shoulders or neck, stretch the hands, uh, flick the uh, fingers, and shake out the wrist, do that. Um, but I'm going to start to introduce the fourth movement of the spine, which is twisting. Now, how do we twist in this position on our hands and knees? I mean, technically, it's not like cat, but you could say it's a version of, of cat, a twisting cat. Sometimes cats get into weird contorted uh, positions, so, or they contort themselves. So here we go. We're going to contort, but it's not going to be intense. Don't worry. Okay, so um, what you're going to do, you're going to start off we're going to have uh, two, two types of twisting here. So the first one is an open twist. And I'm going to start by taking my right hand and I'm just going to either, you have two options here, I can, or if you have another option, by all means, do that. I just want you to be mindful of um, if there's any tension gathering in the neck and shoulders, because if there is, then try the other version and see if that helps. So one version could be taking the arm, the right arm up to the ceiling, okay? Or I can take the right hand and place it at the back of my pelvis. Yeah, so here's a nice open twist. I wanna to continue to find that, that lengthening. The reason why I'm turning this way is because the closed twist is the one you really wanna see. So, um, yeah, continue to think of lengthening. So again, I can take one arm, the right arm up to the ceiling or to the back of the pelvis. Let's just try that on both sides before I incorporate the closed twist. Good. Yeah, so I can move in and out of that a few times. But uh, what I wanted to mention is really as you open into your twist, Find that length before I open into the twist and be mindful of any gathering in the neck and shoulders. So if my twist is only this far, that's fine because I want to think of twisting in that upper body, not jamming in that lower spine, all that business, yeah? So here we go. Let's incorporate that open and closed twist. So here's the open twist. Again, whatever version you like. Nice long neck. And then this right arm, as it comes down, it's going to be under the left armpit. I'm going to slide the top of the palm along the ground. I'm going to start to bring my skull, the side of my skull, um, onto the ground, resting it, tucking that chin. Yeah, I don't want to uh, leave that chin out. It's um, the neck in the extension here is quite vulnerable, so we want to protect it. So I'm going to tuck the chin, rest gently the top side of my uh, skull on the ground. I'm going to evenly distribute the weight into the skull, into that right arm and shoulder. And then from here, and then I can also distribute weight into my um, 
the left hand. And again, find that, that uh, tailbone, the back of the skull, and lengthening them away from each other. Mm. Feeling the twist in the thoracic spine in that rib cage area. So seeing if I can continue to feel both legs, both thigh bones evenly planted. So I'm not leaning so much to one side. I want to be on both legs. Hmm. And if resting here is a bit tedious or if that's not comfortable whatsoever, um, then you can just simply come in and out of it. So again, as I come up, I'm going to uh, press into that left palm, exhale, relax the spine, relax the skull, let it be heavy. So I'm not ah, tensing everything, come up, let it hang, dangle. And I can inhale, exhale. Feed it through. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, feed it through. Okay, so I can decide if I want to move in and out of the twist or if I want to settle into the twist. So on your own time, you can do the other side. So left arm up to the ceiling, we're at the back of the pelvis. And then, I feel like I'm showing some thong, 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 thong. And then feeding that left arm under the right armpit. Tuck that chin, rest gently on the skull. Both thigh bones dropping down evenly. And again, I can choose to move in and out, or I can settle and rest in my twist. In either case, especially if you're moving, let that skull be heavy so that the neck stays soft. Yeah, check in with it every now and then. Excellent. Mm. Great. And when you're satisfied, you can come back onto all fours and maybe check back in with the snaking. Just how does that feel? Hmm. Yeah, how does it feel like your spine has freed up a little bit, neck release, even the shoulders might feel a bit freer. And then uh, you may want to hmm, rest that pelvis onto the heels and child's pose. And then one other counter pose too, actually. If downward dog is something you practice, that might be nice to um, to do just to, to stretch out the back of the legs a little bit. Uh, it's a nice counter pose after cat. So if that's something uh, that grabs your attention, please go for it. If it's something you don't really practice and today's not the day you want to uh, test that out, then we can always come on to our abdomen and I can keep that folded, if you have that folded blanket or towel, you can keep it under my pelvis, which um, will help most of the time. So it's, again, we're all different, but they can help in relieving the lower back. So that lower back lordosis or curve. So I can come onto my abdomen or the front of my body, I should say. And then I can bend the legs and just kind of rock them side to side. And 
or you can um, do your rock the legs a few times. You can either let them rest and turn the head to one side and kind of have a little nap. Or you can um, come back to child's pose. Or if you want to rest in Shavasana, whatever you want to do. Or maybe that's it. Maybe you just wanted to move the spine and get up and get going. So whatever um, you have time for, whatever suits you. I just want to say thank you. Um, and if you have any questions, please, please feel free to um, share them on the comment box. Um, the bottom of the video and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel like the videos that you enjoy doing and We'll see you on that again soon Think love speak love be love Namaste.